green tea. Thanks. So I want to talk about, you know, mm -hmm. we talked about the breath work and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, you being an actor, <laughs> not only an actor, you're a movie star. Mm. <laughs> you know, Don't I mean. insult me. <laughs> A uh, big, uh, just wanted to maybe clarify some things or mm. about your creativity. I mean, we talk about creativity in every other aspect of life, mm. not how she was a person, but in mm. particular, just as, as an actor, mm. where does the inspiration come from mm -hmm. for you to take it from the character you're given mm -hmm. and to go through that process and actually make it happen? Yeah. Is, I guess what I'm wondering. I'd say for actors, it's one thing that you can't ever learn it, it you can start learning from the time maybe start acting but it really helps a lot if throughout your life you uh, had um, observed very carefully it's it's one of the greatest tools an actor can have in his past certainly any emotional drama is also a place uh, acting is a place where you can use that a lot one thing, because of my martial arts background, I very, have been very keen on, on movement. When you look at film, so much time is spent for an actor moving, sitting, standing, walking, whether it's dialogue or without dialogue. But since it's a visual medium, that's one of the, the primary things is how you move. I know you may never hear this from another actor, but I really look at the breathing pattern of the character. So if he's calmer, he's gonna be breathing, you know, very soft and, and long. And uh, typically with bad guys, you come in with, with that kind of timing, but with just much more intensity. And then when it gets into action, you feel the breathing pattern change, or when he gets angry, his breathing pattern change. So right. the last thing is the breathing pattern. And so everything that I built up to that point, from having read the script, developing my subconscious mind with the other character and memorizing the lines and getting to the set, and, and, or before that, doing the environmental kind of context, then getting to the set relationship with the two other people, and then rehearsing. The final piece is the breath. And I use the breath to key in to everything that I've set up in my subconscious to that moment and then go into performance. And it's, uh, it's worked so far <laughs> to stay focused because that's, you know, ultimately you can develop all you want, but if you can't stay focused to deliver it, then you're really in trouble. And typically on set, there's so much going on, so much, um, especially if you're hypersensitive like me, pick up all the different personalities and what they're going through or whatever, and you have to be able to shut that down and focus. And I key it on the breath. So when they say rolling, I just start my breathing exercise. And I just sink right into where I need to. What I'm doing right now is figuring out the palette that I'm going to start with. And oftentimes I'll start with something and immediately see that it's not what I want or it wants, and so I'll change it right away. And when I'm painting, I'm, my being is sort of vibrating at a higher, higher chakra level vibration. And that actually brings my energy up, and I don't stay stuck in the fear, and I don't stay contracted, and I don't stay in the corner going, oh, everything is so fucked up, I can't bear it. Instead, it's higher, it comes closer to my heart and to my spirit. It's a very spiritual way of looking at the world. First of all, for me to be able to have a container to put my rage, for instance, or my joy, or my sort of ecstasy in the beauty of what I see around me. To have a container for that allows me, I think, a sense of safety in that the emotions aren't annihilating to my being. And I think without the container, there, I might have a great fear of just being annihilated by sort of the horrible stuff that happened. There's this element of sort of abandon and wildness even, and ferocity, and passion, and passion, and passion, and joy. 
And beauty. Where do we get that? Out on the street, in the bank, at the grocery store, in our family. But not in mine. So it's a place for us to be bigger, more real, actually. But it's terrifying to be real. It's terrifying. Who says that's OK? Hardly anybody understands how to hold that with the sacredness that it actually is, to be who we are. The way it actually is, if we're able to let go, the way it actually is, is on the canvas. It's like, that's a mess. What is that? Well, welcome to a human being. You know, we don't get all tied up in these little packages that somehow we think we're supposed to be. Art, whatever the medium, is healing. The realm of the transpersonal, connecting with another, either a higher part of myself or the canvas, the paint, um, spirit guides, God, the universe, some sort of energy that is beyond my little ego. And then I carry all of that with me, within me. The canvas can carry it. You, the viewer, might be able to have a sense of that as well, so on so many different levels. Art has the possibility of healing. That's the cherry on the icing of the cake. The cake itself, the thing, the essence of the act is to allow me to be here in all of my vulnerability, in all of my openness, in all of my courage, in all of my rage, in all of my messy, chaotic, not knowing, fucked up, fabulous being. But it really helps a lot if, throughout your life, you uh, had um, observed very carefully. Because that is the art in using the tactics. How do you use them? You know, recognizing the patterns and then what tactics to use to get to it. It doesn't have to be so complex. Sometimes really simple sounds together create the ultimate effect of what you're going for. It extends not just to dancing. I'll just I'll write a lot, I'll do drawing, wherever that idea takes me, I'll, I'll just use that as a channel and bring it back to the, to the dance. Art, whatever the medium, is healing.